This is a slide presentation that uh, features setting up a service in the ECC. It's part of the ECC version 9 update to our existing library of Shortel ECC programming solutions with particular emphasis back on the website at the Dr. Voip site. You'll find a lot of material on scripting in the ECC. At this point, we're just going to do a couple of updates that uh, point out new new additions and new features, new capabilities in version 9. And uh, in this clip, we're going to take a look at services. By way of review, the call flow in, in an ECC contact center is typically the inbound call hits a DID number on a trunk group in the Shortel IPBX which may point to an automated attendant. It may directly point to a logical connection between the Shortel IPBX and the Shortel ECC, which is called a route point IRN. What you need to know is the DID menu and route point live in the IPBBX. At that point, we cross logically over into the contact center and we hit something called an IRN. The IRN will typically point to either a script for get and collect digits uh, or a service and then that service will contain a group and the group will contain an agent. So uh, we're going to take a look at setting up a service. A script and a service are attached to the IRN. A script will typically be something that we use to prompt and collect digits. Uh, ask the caller to put in their account number, for example, so we can do a data dip, look this up in uh, an attached computer, and bring it back and manipulate our call flow based on that uh, result. This is where we define our queue messages, uh, establish priorities or, or call uh, identities that will be used to change call flow. Uh, we also initiate our callback scripting here. So scripts contain steps. Uh, scripts may be part of a service. So when we set up a service, uh, typically it will point to a group. It will point to overflow, interflow, how to handle no agent actions, and will contain how to play our messages and music in queue. This piece here is typically a script. So the two are closely related and they're attached to an IRN. They separate the IRN from the group. The group again contains the agents. Inbound call, obviously we're seeking to get to an agent, but the script and the service uh, enable us to apply the necessary parameters to see that the customer interaction with this agent is uh, most effective. So let's log in and take a look at an actual ECC service setup. So groups are reached through services. Uh, you can't send a call directly to a group. The call comes in through the route point to the IRN. The IRN either sends the call to a script or to a service. And the service will, in fact, contain uh, options for scripts and groups. So when we're defining um, our services, which we'll find under routing, uh, we're going to select services. It'll take us to this screen. we we'll go ahead and hit New. Um, You'll go ahead and give the service an appropriate name. Uh, it's always a little interesting to figure out, am I going to name the service different than I name the group? Um, but make this unique. And the purpose of a service is to define uh, our announcement plan, our various destinations, whether we will have overflow, whether we will have interflow, whether what will we do if a call comes to a service that has nobody logged in? How will we handle our scheduled callbacks? 
uh, how will we handle abandoned calls? And of course, the general parameters for this service. So taking a look at them uh, in particular, we'll go ahead and give a name. At that point, we're going to select the criteria on which the service will select an agent. So there's two sides to that equation, right? There's the side that says, how will the system select an agent? And there will also be a parameter that deals with how will an agent who is a member of multiple groups select an incoming call? So here, the agent selection criteria is going to be uh, longest idle. You could set it for terminal, circular, best skill fit, Experience tells me that um, longest idle and best skill fit are um, the two most useful uh, call center agent deployment models, agent management models. Terminal and circular don't make a whole lot of sense to me, but they're there. So if you have a group that consists of a uh, small number of agents and you just want to circle through the agents uh, or go through them in a list format, this is well you would do that. So skill f is a subject we'll talk about in a little greater detail uh, when we set up our skills, but at this point, uh, let's just set this for longest idle. Is this a um, chat enabled service? So if you're going to support chat in your deployments, uh, you, w you would have a service of agents who will chat and this is where they'd be assigned and you would enable this checkbox and you would also uh, determine whether we want an inbound voice call to uh, interrupt chat. Uh, not interrupt it, but can we um, establish the interaction? And again, this maps back to the setting we had for whether an agent uh, can handle multiple interactions. How much wrap time uh, this service will provide? So I like to think of this as call disposition when the call ends. Um, how much time will we give the agent, if any, to select a wrap code? Uh, if a call is presented to that agent and they do not answer, uh, we're going to put them in release. How long uh, do we uh, wait before we do that? And um, what's our music source? Is it going to be a stream of music? Is it going to be silence? Uh, is it going to be a script? Uh, when we look at scripts, you'll see how we establish the play file that will contain the music. Um, the wave file strategy is a good strategy because uh, unlike, you know, what music on whole source where we have to play it to everybody, this enables us to set up different uh, messages on hold for this particular service. The announcement plan. So in the announcement plan, if we're going to have a mandatory greeting, so um, if everybody them will hear a mandatory announcement, thanks for calling, your call will be monitored. How long do we wait? Uh, how long do they hear music uh, before we go to look for an agent. So a call comes in to the service. Generally, if there's an agent available, we want to find that agent, deliver the call. However, if we have a mandatory announcement set, then all callers to this service will hear that mandatory announcement before um, the agent is connected if an agent is available. If an agent is not available, uh, we want to then select the first uh, announcement that they would hear. We love you. Please hold the line. We'll be right with you. And at that point, uh, how long before uh, they hear the next announcement, during which time they're going to be listening to music. The secondary announcement, uh, if we're going to have multiple uh, announcements at this point, we would go ahead and um, add our secondary message, our third message, and so on. And we'd set it here. And so at the, as soon as you select that you're going to have follow-on messages, you get the option up here to enable a secondary announcement. Go ahead and select it and so forth. Um, 
how much time between messages, and then you can determine if you want to cycle the last message, cycle through all the messages, or there is no cycle, just keep going down the list. You can add uh, messages. The destination is where we actually send the destination for this service. So when a, uh, a call comes in, it's typically going to go to either a group or an individual agent queue. There is no big difference between a group and an agent queue. Think of an agent queue as nothing more than a group of one agent. And this is useful when we want a call, uh, a client to be able to call back to the agent uh, that they were speaking to in the last interaction. So think of an agent queue quite simply as nothing more than a group that contains one agent. Here we have a group, it's called the um, callback team. Now you can actually um, set up shifts here. So if I go ahead and select a um, on our shift here, I have the option at that point of changing the destination um, based on um, based on the shift. So at 6.30, uh, I want the calls to go one way. At uh, 9 o'clock, uh, when that shift starts, I, I really need that, uh, that call to go uh, someplace else. And we go forth and set things up that way. Uh, you do not have to use shifts. If you don't use shifts, uh, basically what you're doing is um, just sending it to the default destination. Overflow and interflow uh, work kind of the same, but they have different uh, different results as far as your reports. The best way to think of overflow is if I have an incoming destination of group A, um, I can set in my overflow how long uh, calls will overflow to this other group after let's say 90 seconds. So what we're saying is though the destination for this group is the callback team. If a call comes in here and it's longer than 90 seconds, overflow the call to this other group. Now what you need to understand is that is different than an interflow in the following way. In an overflow, we do not take the call away from the destination group. What we're doing here is increasing the number of agents that can answer that call. So if someone in the original destination group becomes available, they will in fact get the call. But we have now overflowed to include a larger group of agents. That's different than interflow. Interflow will take the call away from the original destination. So uh, perhaps we want to send this to another service. We want to transfer it to you know, PBX extension. We want to send it to another script that uh, might offer the caller some options. We want to send it to an agent queue. Uh, the difference, however, is that in your reports, the overflow will, when it's answered, will be counted in the statistics of that of incoming call. That's one incoming call. If we interflow the call, uh, we have actually terminated the first call and established the second call. So that we have one incoming call to the PBX, the contact center is going to um, report uh, two different calls. And once again, uh, you have the option to just send it to a default or to set up uh, based on shifts. Uh, alternative destinations for that call. We need to plan for no agents. What do we do if a call, I mean, I can't think of a worse experience than to call into a contact center, uh, get routed, um, be waiting patiently, only to find out that everybody went home. So uh, to avoid that situation, we set up 
a situation in which the service will first find out if anybody's logged in. Uh, if they're not logged in, we can send them someplace else uh, to another IRN, to another device, to another script, and so forth. We don't want people uh, being stuck in our uh, queues because nobody is logged in. Uh, scheduled callbacks, we can go ahead and uh, say that we're in North America, it's a 10-digit number plan. We're going to set our callback. Uh, we're going to attempt the callback for 48 hours. Uh, do we want to run a script uh, that we play to the agent before the call is uh, placed? Uh, do we want to require the agent? So requiring agent confirmation, how this works is when the system is going to place a callback, uh, it will alert the agent by popping up on their screen and saying you're being reserved. When they're reserved, then the system places the outbound call and connects them. If they don't answer within 10 seconds, they'll be in, put into forced release. Um, what's the default destination for scheduled callbacks in this group? Uh, we can either not define it or we can say it's a group and a group is the callback team and so forth. Likewise with all the other parameters you have the ability to set, change this based on um, particular operating hours. So if we set up on hours we can then go ahead and change uh, the destination for that callback. Lastly, uh, abandoned calls. Do we allow abandoned calls? So if a caller hangs up while in this service for longer than 30 seconds, we'll consider that an abandoned call. And once again, we'll treat that just like a scheduled callback. And the same type of parameters um, apply. In this situation, you might want to run a script. Uh, to let the agent know that uh, this is someone who hung up. So, um, as you can see, service concept is a very integral part of your call center. Um, it most definitely includes scripts and enables you to set up destinations or multiple destinations or alternative destinations. It lets you define overflow, interflow, what to do if there are no agents, uh, how to handle our scheduled and abandoned callbacks.